Hello and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show brought to you by the Get-Go Cafe and Market. Ramon, our first chance to hook up since the Steelers' 24-17 victory in Indianapolis. 24 points. <laughs> All by the offense. Ah. Um, what's going on here? What did you like? What didn't you like? What what I, what I like is a dub, okay? And and a dub against a bad team, too, right? A, a coach that just recently got a head coaching job. Their front office is, is a mess at times. The quarterback is an older guy that looks like an older guy. Um, and you found a way with a bunch of young guys – uh, to get out of dub. That's what I liked as in, in its entirety. That's what I liked, okay, about this game. And there's more to be broken down from that. What I don't like, though, is um, the way first half and second half hadn't matched up much at all in these wins, in a sense. It, there has been hardly any continuation of leaving the half good, first half good, and starting the first half hot, too. That's been a, a issue for me, and I kind of tweeted through the game while it was going on Monday night. Like, whoa, let's let's find ways to do not do the Matt Canada thing. I don't be him, be the other guy that we need in the first half. Find a way to put him in a suitcase and bring him on the on the field with you. I don't care what the suitcase is. Bring that from the first half, and let's let's complete that man. And um, there's a lot to this team. And I, if you, if we're being real, if you're a realist about what this season is, what this team is, I think there's a few things you can say, and you probably got more to add to it too, DK, is I see a young team when we're used to having so many veterans. And I know most people are going to say, well, you got Cam, you got TJ, you got Minka. Yeah, but they got their own thing going on over there too because they're surrounded by a bunch of young guys on the defense or new guys. Larry O, love him, new guy, okay? Devin Bush, still, young guy. Miles Zach, when he's out there, new guy. Still giving Robert Spillane opportunities to start. The secondary moving in and out. Offensively, oldest guy, is correct me if I'm wrong, Chooks? Uh, he's James Daniels? I, I mean, Chooks is the most tenured, I or think. Mason Cole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's a really young offense. There's it's no a super question young group, but, but in that, though, I think we're 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 really what's what's where I, where I want to leave it within all of that young guy stuff. I think we're really wrong on judging them if we don't say they're still fighting. They hate bad plays. We see them still trying. The effort is there. None of those things had left. And you kind of say you look at that and and the way I uh, you know put it in a, in a sense is that's the little bro that eventually is gonna grow up. And I hope he's the animal that I need him to be when he grow up. You know what I'm saying? I, I do. Moan, I, I get the sense. Well, let's put it this way. Heading into Philadelphia, yeah. right before the the bye week and then right after the Buffalo slaughter, what you had was a team that had, and rightly so, yeah. no idea what to expect from the rest of this season. And I feel like that there was some recalibration that happened at the bye week where they were able to say, listen, let's just go play. Yeah. And that was something Arthur Mollette said to me. He goes, oh, dude, there's nothing we can do about the two and six. There's nothing what we can do. do. What you going to do? There's, there's, no, there's no hindsight. There's no regrets. Let's just go play. And they went yeah. and they, they beat the Saints. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. uh, they stayed within reach, you know, of the Bengals. Yeah, they did. And then they beat this team that – it's not very good. All of their defense has been good. They haven't given up this many points to hardly yeah. anybody. Right. Uh, meaning Indianapolis, of course. And then they, you know, they, they they've still got well, what is it? Six games yeah. left. Six games. You know. Yeah. And they don't seem to be fussing or fretting. Is the sense that, that I get from in yes. there about? Oh no! What do we do? We what do we do? do? Yeah. They've just playing football. It, you, you, it, to me, it feels like my second year in the league. With how this team is kind of growing up. My first year, of course, is a whirlwind. Man, I don't know what I don't know. And it always, you know what I'm saying? And you yeah. probably, I don't even know how many conversations we were having then, okay? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, it, it, you weren't nearly important enough. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. But we leave out of that year, and I'm feeling good about being a pro. 16 games, woo, under my belt. And it, it really honed into me what I was told was, 
look, if you're going to mess up, mess up 100 miles per hour. As long as I'm seeing your effort, I know I got something because I can mold and shape that into something magnificent. OK, and by the end of my career, it turned into something good. Right. Kid, would you agree with that? Yes, because absolutely. I had to learn. OK, I'm in the league. Woo, we're the one percent. But how do I stay? How do you I feel stay? Like that's where this 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 team and specifically the offense is at. Like we, we just got to go punch somebody. You remember we said that a little bit though. Like you got to get the, you just got to go start beating people up. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. on that note, on that note, here's where I start getting you going. Watch this, everybody. <laughs> here we go. Ready? Yeah. So game's over. Game's been over for about 20, 25 minutes. The locker room is emptying out, and. Over there, against one wall, where the offensive linemen sit, and they always sit together because that's how they roll. (sighs) And Kevin Dotson's sitting there at his stall, and Chuk Sikorafor sitting right over here. And Dotson, I overhear this. This is before I went over to join them. I hear Dotson going, no sacks. I gave up no sacks. See? <laughs> Hang on. Wait for me. <laughs> he goes, and such and such and such never got around me once. And there was one play where I missed on a run tackle, or whatever. And Chooks is sitting here going next to him like this. Okay. Yeah. There, you know, Dan Moore was in there uh, yeah. before that. I spent a good amount of time with Dan Moore. I've been rough on him, Moan. You know yeah. that. We both have. We, have we both now. have. I tweeted about it. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I, I told him, I said, listen, I said, I, you know, at, this was after the game. I said, I, I saw the good, I saw the bad and everything else here. But it looks like it's getting better. I'm not saying that to be nice to him. You know me better than that. <laughs> He's, yeah, I do. <laughs> his performance was a marked upgrade over what he'd done in recent yeah. weeks. Didn't like the early holding penalty, but don't really have a whole lot else to say negative about him. <clears throat> My point was, Moan, is they're sitting there, these guys, and Mason Cole over there too, and James Daniels, and they're saying, we're getting better. We feel like we're getting better. At one yeah. point, I said, to, I said to Dan Moore, I said, wouldn't this have been wonderful, like magic to have had in week one? And he goes... Not how it goes. <laughs> it ain't smart by him, man. Uh, and, and for even if it wasn't as clean in those moments in a dub, in a win, mm-hmm. you feel those things because you accomplished the goal of getting the win as a team, right? And, and with that being said, you kind of say to yourself, whatever the film says, that's the reality of what actually happened. Yes. But in this moment, I did what we needed to do as a player. To it's how it feels myself. before any film. I heard that from yes. before they sit in the classroom and have this and that dissected. How did it feel out there? And when Kevin Dotson says to me, he said, this is the most together yep. we've been. This game right here, meaning yep. the offense, this is the most together that we've been. We moved in this direction. How about the Najee touchdown? Yes. Yep. Yes. What happened? The whole left side of the line. Ooh, okay. Dumb. I could picture 73 and 78 coming across. <laughs> and, and, and truthfully, I, we don't want to make this a cheerleader thing, but what we're saying is my group was there. Mm-hmm. Our team was there. Going from Rashad Mendenhall to figuring out what Le'Veon was. Remember how that offense sputtered? It you, was weird. You remember that, right? It was it weird. Sputtered, <laughs> but then it got to a point where this group is fighting and we all got to. And that's when you start to build and, oh, you are with me. I was glad to hear the commentator say Deontay was a little ticked off because he didn't get many targets. Well, why? Because he believes that I belong in this offense. You see, it's not a quit thing with this guy, with these guys. It's a, we just got to mold it into whatever it is. Seeing George Pickens be ticked off, you know? It, and and everybody, I thought, across the board responded and responded well to the third quarter adversity by coming out and playing their best football in the fourth. Yo. When when we come back, Moan, there, there's something unusual about this offense and its consistency, and I want to stay on the offensive side Let's of the ball that. here. All right. Yeah. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Ramon, when when referencing this offense right now, consistency comes up a lot in the locker room, and it should, because you will see Kenny drop back and make a 35-yard pass to George Pickens down the right sideline. You'll also see somebody just make a a drop, or Kenny will make – I didn't think he made many uh, (laughs) this week, week, but uh, he'll make an occasional bad pass. 
and you'll see a missed block or a penalty and whatever else here. How difficult is it for the athlete at the athlete level? Yeah. To come to grips with, but we just did this. <laughs> Why didn't we do it now? Yeah. What you, is, what, where's your, where does your brain go there? We man, just did this. Man, it is, it's, it's a confusion because you've, you've seen it, you've done it, as you said, and it's like, but why? And, but that's sports, right? That's the beauty of it. It's the adversity of it. It's the, in the sense of what you said, getting to that pro level of just, it's automatic all the time. It's reps. And that's what this group rack, like lacks a lot too, is the reps of doing those things. Like to your point, watching Kenny throw a pass that I'm sure you've seen in practice that you can't report on. That's just concise, you know, it's just accurate as ever. But one of the first third downs of the game sails over the receiver head. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's to your point of, I, I know I can do this. I've done those things before. And then it starts to click later in the game. And I think from your point in the last segment, from that third quarter to when it starts to click again in the fourth, it's like, okay, yeah, this is where we're comfortable at. Not necessarily the second win, but the idea of, I just need to play ball. But the nerves, DK, of it all, you can't really explain it other than, it's ugly, and you got to leave plays behind you. And to an extent, and this is this is the other point that I wanted to make here is that when you when you talk to these guys, and you obviously experienced it, Moan, they also want to learn from them and learn from them the, these mistakes immediately. Yeah. Do you remember Kenny taking the sack that took the Steelers out of field goal range? It was yeah. right after James Pierre's interception, and Anthony McFarland runs right past ninety one. Absolutely should have chipped him. You know what I'm talking about? Yep, I know. And ninety one standing there like seriously, seriously. <laughs> see him? He's like, you're just gonna let me go at the quarterback? Okay. And you, and you know did. what? And he did. But in those moments, as as bad as it is, in those moments, everybody has to have that hard moment. I don't care what sport you're playing. Whether your team is up by seven and you're the pitcher that, that gets five and then they rally some more and then you lose the game. Or whether it's basketball and you don't know how to – or you don't take – you take the wrong time out and you get a tech like Michigan, right? Like that, like the Fab Five. Everybody got to have a hard pro moment, whether it's one game – that you lose or eventually win, that you never have that mistake again. Because as players sometimes, though, too, you get to a point to where, well, shoot, I'm on autopilot. I'm good to go. And then you get humbled again. Like McFarlane on that play got humbled to be like, my detail has to be in an all-time high level because it's that's what being a pro is. All he's going to see on film the first it. few days of this week. It's it's all. He, it's not going to be the nice run that he had. It's not going to be <laughs> oh. the one time he almost broke one. No. I mean, like, I'm talking about broke one, like yeah. Maryland style, okay? And it, it, he's just going to see that and say, how do you run past 91 there? How do you just, how do you not realize that there's absolutely – because by that point, Dan Moore had gone to his yeah. right. Dan Moore had a guy. I don't he know how that looked his on gap. TV. That wasn't on him. Right. I don't They're know how that all- looks on TV because I saw people barking about Dan Moore. Uh-uh. Dan Moore I, went to his guy. All signs pointed to the entire offensive line sliding, right? They did. And they're supposed to be either tight end or running back for the edge. He has somebody in his B gap. He took that guy in his B gap at left tackle. And the tight end went out for a pass. Yep. (laughs) And the running back missed on. So you can say, and also I look at Kenny on that play too. I say, Kenny, you got to know you're hot. But see, that's also him as a pro DK. That's one of those things where Ben wouldn't mind. Yeah, let him go. I got him. He good. Because what was he doing? Ha, 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 down the middle. First time I saw that play happen was in Detroit, I think, on Thanksgiving. And uh-huh. I'm running. I'm, I'm blocking. I might have been extra tight end, if I'm not mistaken. I was somewhere on the field. I'm like, we're supposed to be blocking. No. Ben had a hot to Heath right down the scene. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, we can throw the ball here, too? Had no freaking idea. Ben didn't mind them blitzing. Because why? No, he, he welcomed it because he could just go right over their heads. I see him. It was yeah. a hot by the tight end that he should have got his head around quick, quicker. Kenny should have looked at the tight end quicker also, and Ant should have been able to block the, or cut 
the defensive end. That wasn't a tackle. All yeah. that, now, five the mistake, people were probably to blame on that play. Yeah, the, mis- the mistake that Kenny makes on that play, and I talked to one individual in the locker room who shall go unnamed in this context, but the mistake that Kenny makes there is that Kenny goes this way. Yes, okay. Yep. <laughs> all right, so Kenny goes this way. And he's facing completely away from 91. I apologize to 91 and 91's family. I have no idea who 91 is. Yannick Ngakwe. Yannick Ngakwe. All right, Ngakwe. good. All right, yeah. so, so Kenny's facing this right. He didn't see him. Yannick, yep. Yeah. Yep. Kenny didn't but see, see him. But see, this is also – So it's not like Kenny made a conscious decision to not – oh, I'm not going to throw the ball away. I'm just going to no. eat it. He didn't see him. He didn't see him. But this is also the communication factor to DK where I say this team is young. This team is new. Why? Because communication up front from the offensive line said, hey, Ralph, we're sliding right. Oh, rip, rip. Everybody's right. Somebody's coming back for the something on the end, and there's possibly a hot. Kenny's probably got so much going on in his head. He probably heard it, but he didn't deposit it to actually think about it. <laughs> so because of that, sack quarterback. But to the positive, to the positive extent here. I want to point this out here because what, what you do want to see is guys learning from the mistakes and immediately yeah. adjusting as opposed to, or gradually adjusting, gradually processing. Yeah. So when we talk about Kenny's first couple of starts, what's the main thing that stood out? Interceptions. Interceptions. Tons of them, right? Kenny's next couple of starts. Throw the ball away, Kenny. Throw the ball away, Kenny. Throw the ball away, Kenny. You know what ball Kenny away. never did last night? He, you know, ne- was, he never threw the ball away. Yeah. He also didn't throw any interceptions. He did not. He did okay. not. Okay. He, he had – there were four drops out of his eight incomplete passes. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, that's progress. Yeah. That's learning yeah. from your mistake and putting it yeah. into something. It is, man. Uh, and and I, I look at this and say the growth that we need him to have, I think it's there. I think right now we're so focused on what this season is and what win losses are in general that these steps can't be recognized until later. From just that one play in general, I say this, the O-line got that right. They probably said in that meeting room after they had film review and said, not us. Not us. <laughs> <laughs> not us. And that's a good uh... thing despite it being a negative play. You no, know, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine for those guys to feel good about themselves. It, it really it, is. It you know? is, man. And and there's so many other facets of this game, too. Uh, the, the defense, you know, finally, I ain't going to say cracking a little bit, but we saw them actually have a better moment in a, this year than they did last year. On the road to Minnesota, couldn't stop a nosebleed then. You had Andy having them reeling. And they found a way to really crack that pot of stopping them from either getting into the end zone or the fourth down stop in the secondary in which they got eight up. That, again, a step, right, when we speak about what this team is. And I'm just like, we don't like it. I don't like being, what are we, four and seven, whatever the case may be. It sucks. But this is a, a ball of clay. With a bunch of missing just ingredients and a and and a sketch of what we actually need to be, but there are steps being made, DK. There are when we and come they're back, not quitting. It don't look like there's no quit mode. It, it, it don't look like what the Bengals look like. It didn't look like what Cleveland looks like. It no. doesn't look like it doesn't look like football. New Orleans. They're playing football. They're getting better. And as Mike Tomlin said to me in an answer to a question that I that I asked after the game. Uh, even while their younger players are growing, they feel that their younger players are good enough to both get better and to win games. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. When we come back, the only segment that matters. Hey, Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show and the only segment that matters. It's brought to you by the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where quality is at the core of every menu item. Three expert chefs fine-tune every detail so that every sub, burger, salad, wrap, drink, app, and pilgrim are crafted for craveability. Order your favorite item at the Get-Go Cafe and Market today. Better believe it. Moan, today's entry comes from alan wedsworth and he asks hey moan in this game in indianapolis 
TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith were consistently running past Matt Ryan, and he would just step up or he didn't have to move at all. Mm-hmm. Is this more on the pass rush or is it on the tackles dictating where the pass rush is going? Oh. I kept thinking that one should go deep, forcing him up into the path of the other. You, you know, saw this, right? I did. The, the, meetings, did. the meetings behind the quarterback, there were tons of them. Yeah, they they there were a uh, really good question, man, uh, mm-hmm. for a lot of different reasons. So, yes, it could go like that. TJ could get up the field and Alex can go uh, not as, as deep as TJ does. And you bring up a, a party there. I will say this. Their interior offensive line of the coach is pretty solid. Quentin Nelson is one of the best. I think there are some guys as you have seen play Quentin and Quentin got sh- got got uh, he got shocked by who they were and what they could do to him. Everybody knows what Cam is, okay? Cam has seen uh, 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 Quinn at, at the All Pro. I mean, at the Pro Bowl, they know each other. They know what they bring to this matchup. To his Monday night, their middle three played well. Yes, you do need more push up the middle. That's why we've I've, I've dropped this nugget of having this conversation. I think Cam needs a higher pedigree co coworker next to him. You heard me say this, right? And and and, and conversations about what next year could be with who you go after as far as players. I think that's something that was necessary. I like the Jordan Davis kid out of Georgia last year. I was like, man, it'd be awesome if they could get him. You remember having those conversations? I remember you bringing him up all the time. (laughs) And it it pays off when you have guys like that. Um, and, And I'll say this about that. That plan does work, okay? And this is the idea, too. If you flush Matt Ryan out, he ain't going nowhere. We saw that. Okay. We saw Terrell honestly look shocked when he got the sack. Like, oh, he didn't, he's not moving. We got him. I, I got him. Okay. <laughs> okay. That right there is yeah. where I'm going to stop you. Okay. I asked Kim after the game. Yeah. <laughs> about the meeting of the of the of the edge rushers of the bubble the umbrella yeah yeah it was old like like i was joking with cam i said it reminded me of tj and bud's early years yep that happened all the time because bud was always overrunning yes, the quarterback was. in his early years right okay yep. and cam gives me one of these head tilts of his <laughs> and says this is going to sound crazy, but we spend so much time as a defense getting ready for these mobile quarterbacks that we would close in on Matt Ryan and we would almost position or yep. angle our okay, position or angle ourselves to chase to chase him or to cut him off the way we would cut off a Lamar Jackson. And by the time we got there. What you just said dovetails with this perfectly because T.E. gets there and he yeah. goes, wait, wait, this is it? This is all <laughs> I have to do? <laughs> He's just <laughs> standing here. Yeah. And, 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 and it's, it's the, the little stuff about the game inside it, the game. Like that never would have occurred to me. No, but no. it makes a lot of sense. And it, it really lends, does. It lends itself to, one, the rush that – Cam and Larry them had up front, right, as far as get enough rush but see where he's exiting from. Okay, it lends itself to that, uh, but it also shows that there is a plan to them getting behind the quarterback. And and whether Alex went too deep or TJ went too deep as far as their rush lanes on getting to him to flush him out a little bit. Um, And last night's game, I guess, is is probably what Cam's alluding to or the other night's game. God, my days are off. The Monday night game alludes to Cam is probably used to them flushing the the, the quarterback out. Right. And he's waiting on it. And or he's other, trying to – and right. Matt Ryan doesn't do that. No, and the other component to this is that Indianapolis's offensive line is – is well paid. Yeah, they are. And and rightly so on the interior. They're nowhere near as strong on the tackles. So they were going to have one impact up front yeah. and an entirely different impact or lack of impact yeah. on, on the edges then. Oh, and by the way, speaking of preparation for mobile quarterbacks, guess who the Steelers have to face <laughs> this week in Atlanta? Yeah. I mean, I mean, that, that's, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to, it's going to be a challenge because so, now they're going to have to readjust. Yeah. So let's, let's watch that this week as Marcus Mariota is the quarterback in Atlanta of what TJ and Alex Highsmith's rush is. 
is it as far upfield as it was in the Colts game? You know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And what does Cam and and Larry do or warmly do as far as their rush? Does it change for TJ and Alex outside? Are they the one pushing up the middle more to flush them out outside to the faster guys? And I'm sure Cam don't want to say that Alex uh, High Smith or TJ are faster than him, but that's the idea is TJ is always going to run you down or Alex has the ability to run you down too. Yeah, there's – it it was it was a strange game, and then by the time they get to the fourth quarter, defensively they start sending, you know, Arthur Mallette, and they hadn't sent corners back there all year. You know why? You mm. had a sitting duck. <laughs> you know, Go, <laughs> somebody get him. And, and the other part too was, and I said this too, when uh, Matt Ryan was able to, you know, look downfield after they didn't get the rush that they wanted to. Uh, he's a guy that's savvy enough to look downfield and make that throw in the pocket. So what always works? Rush and coverage work together. So let's send pressure at them. Yeah, although there wasn't a whole lot of coverage, but that's another subject for another oh, day. Another another subject for another day. Moan, let's do another one tomorrow. You know what? Let's do it.